Every single human being is meditating all the time. You're all doing it right now. But what are you meditating on? You're meditating on yourself. Acceptance. The word acceptance is how you build resilience and how you overcome the things that have happened in your life. And I think a lot of the time, the truth of the matter is we don't want to accept. And the longer we carry on this idea that this should not have happened to me, why did it happen to me? Why is my life so unfair? These are all words and stories that we tell ourselves, which are stories of non-acceptance. Think about if you really accepted the things that have happened in your life, what are the words that you would say to yourself? It's okay. It was meant to happen. What can I learn from this? Those are words of acceptance. And the truth of the matter is, even though we say we want to overcome them and we want to accept them, a lot of the time we actually want to hold on to the pain. We want to hold on to the trauma of the things that have happened to us in our life because that becomes our identity. We now identify as the victim. You know, sometimes I'll meet someone and within two minutes, they'll start telling me about a trauma that has happened 10 years ago. And they'll say completely without me asking them any questions related to it, they'll say, you know what, 10 years ago, my dad died. What I've understood by hearing this again and again, oh, that is who you are now. That's your story. That's become how you identify with yourself. I identify with as the guy whose dad died 10 years ago. So that's the badge of honor that I'm carrying with me all the time. And as soon as I meet someone new, I present them my identity. You're not actually telling me about your event. You're telling me about your identity. This is who I am. So the question you have to ask yourself is, how long do I want to hold on to the pain? How long do I want to hold on to it? And that is a very difficult question. It sounds easy, but the truth of the matter is you've been carrying that pain for a long time. And now you've begun to see that this is who I am. The way I start to think of it is, I cannot change the past, but I choose not to carry it with me. Do you see the difference? The past is always there. But if you put it down, and if you let it go, over time there becomes a distance between you and that event. But if you keep carrying it day after day after day, then it is something that becomes a part of you. There's a wonderful story of two monks who are going for a walk. And these two monks have taken a vow to never touch a woman in their life. And these two monks are going for a walk one day and they see an old woman standing by a, a, a stream and she needs help to cross the stream. The older and the wiser monk, without even saying anything, he picks up this old woman, puts her on her back, puts her on his back, carries her across, puts her down and, and, and they go on their way. And about half an hour goes by and the younger, less experienced monk, he says, look, I have to stop you. I need to ask this question. We have taken a vow to never touch a woman. Why did you carry that woman across the stream? The older, wiser monk says, I carried that woman across and I left her on the other side of the stream. Why are you still carrying her? You see the difference? He did it, he put it down, and he let, let it go out of his mind. But the less experienced monk is, is still thinking about it. And this is exactly what we do with our traumas. How long do you want to carry this trauma? How long do you want to say that this is always going to be with me? I'm never going to be able to let it go. And I'm not saying that the event didn't happen. I'm not telling you to have amnesia and forget about the event. The question is, I cannot change the past, but how long do I want to carry it with me? And so can you start to use a different mantra in your mind? Remember how the... the, the the technology of how this all works, how do you carry trauma is that you keep repeating the story in your mind. It is words that you keep saying to yourself again and again and again. Whenever you meet someone, you keep bringing up the subject. 
Whenever you're sitting quietly in your room, you keep replaying that scenario in your head. I should have said this. I could have said this. Why didn't I do this? The guru comes up with a technique, which I call wisdom words, which the guru calls the guru's shabad. Guru's shabad means words of wisdom. Can you change your own words, the own stories that are going on in your head and replace them with wisdom words? And the wisdom words would sound very different. The wisdom words would say things like, I choose happiness now. That is not happening to me right now. That event has gone. It's past. I trust the universe. I accept anything that the universe throws my way. These are wisdom words. And you can use all of Guru Granth Sahib is essentially a wisdom word. It's a package. You can take any line, any sentence, any mantra, any Shabad, and just keep repeating that. And that, that's where you start to see real transformation. The word Guru means to take you from your own darkness to your own lightness. And what is the Guru? Shabad is the Guru. The wisdom is the Guru. So by practicing wisdom words, mantras, all the time, you start to remove that sense of darkness from within. Because if you don't do that, what is the alternative? The alternative is that I'm just going to repeat my own stories. And I, I, I like, I'll, I'll leave you with this thought. Every single human being is meditating all the time. You're all doing it right now. But what you're meditating on is this idea of me, I, me, myself, my worries, my thoughts, my hopes, my desires, my future, my past. This is what you're meditating on all the time. So when people say, I don't know how to meditate, I say that's not true. You're meditating all the time. But what are you meditating on? You're meditating on yourself. Or more importantly, you're meditating on that person who created the trauma within your mind. You know, think about when somebody walks past the room that you don't like. Straight away, you start thinking, oh, that guy owes me money. He did this to me. I can't believe he's here. Why is he here at the same time as me? That guy's walked away, but 10 minutes later, you're still thinking about it. And the, the, the most important question is, why are you meditating on him? Why is that person become your meditation? So when we start to understand how our minds work and our mind is constantly meditating, ruminating on these ideas, then the, the, the Guru Nanak's technique is simple. Change what you're meditating on. Let me give you my words. Let me give you my wisdom. The Guru is saying to you, take my words. Take my mat, my thinking. Don't take your own mind, man mat, your own mind. Take my, my thinking because I've solved this problem. I've solved this riddle. I know how to fix the mind. And once I know how to fix the mind, I'm going to give you the same techniques. So Shabad, wisdom words, is how you overcome the traumas of your past because you will not be able to change the past, but you can change your present and change your future.